Hi, uh, Steve House yes, sure. here, and I'm here Hi. with my friend Narendra Nayak in, in India. And I, um, many, many years ago, I met Premanand, who founded an organization called the Indian Skeptics. He actually came to the United States. I got to hang out with him. He got to do magic tricks with me. He's written a number of books about Sai Baba. I actually did a whole interview with him. And I recently read an article in the Washington Post about a Hindu uh, cult that was hypnotizing members to apparently assassinate uh, humanists and, and intellectuals. Uh, and I sent uh, Narendra you the link and you said, Actually, I was on the list and I've had a police guard. And I said, wow, would you do this video with me? So let's start by, tell us about the organization that you are now head of in India. We call it as the Federation of Indian Rationalist Associations. And we have got about 80 member organizations with us. Atheist, skeptic, humanist, rationalist, atheist organizations who all work together for a common cause. Great. The, so it's like an umbrella organization of 18 yes. individual organizations. 80, 8, 8, 0. 8, 8 0. 0. Wow. Yeah. So can, we, can I ask approximately how many members uh, are in these 80 organizations around India? There should be around, I think, 300,000 members. Wow. Count all of them together. Because wow. there are some with 200, 100,000, some with 80,000, and some with only 10. It's like that. But we are all together. Wow. I'm so impressed. I just want to tell our listeners who don't know about uh, the work, and when I mention Premanon, so Premanon was a, a uh, courageous uh, skeptic who literally uh, even got a government grant to, to train students to go to villages, to pretend that they were gurus or godmen, to do so-called miracles. But then instead of taking the money like all the other gurus, they'd go, no, no, no. We wanted to show you this is a trick. And yes. would rationally explain to people not to give their power over to some person thinking that they're divine. Is that, am yes. I saying it correctly? Right. right, yes, you are. So it's been a movement of education throughout the countrysides and throughout the cities as well to encourage people to question some of their superstitions and especially yes. to question con, con artists and gurus yes. who are abusing yes. people sexually, doing sleight of hand tricks, like Sai Baba is probably one of the most famous of these so-called God, yes. God people. Yes, God men. God men. God men, God right. Men. But there are also female gurus from India, I am aware, that are not so yes. healthy too, right? Yes, we could call them God women. God or women. Rather we say God persons. God women. Great. Or to be gender neutral, we'll say God persons. Right. God persons. Right. It's more politically correct in 20, yes. 2018. So, Narendra, I'm going to put a link to the article <laughs> that you sent me from India, but also the Washington Post article. But could you just tell our listeners about this particular group? and what you know of them and what happened? It's not just one single group. Uh -huh. It's a group of a number of people, number of organizations who are not very happy with what we are doing because we are training people to question. And when people question, they will ask questions about everything happening around them. And when they ask questions, it's a lot of those people who are exploiting them will get exposed. So they don't. Can I like ask you thing. to move your iPad over so your face is in the middle again? Perfect. Right, right. Now, so what I'm hearing you say is the article that I read that named a particular group. You're saying actually it's more of a conspiracy. Yes, oh, very uh, correct. 
very correct. And these people are the center of it. They are what? Because are the, they are the center of it. They are the kingpins there. So they're, they're yes, someone they controlling the, kingpins. the other people? You are blo you, 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 the yes. sound went out for a minute. Say it again, please. Yes. Uh, it is a sort of it's a sort of conspiracy with these people as the kingpins. And then it is that they all want to silence us because we are the only force that stands between them and the exploitation of people. So that's why they want to eliminate us. And I know that Rahman was threatened many times uh, physically as well, but now they're actually people have been killed, correct? By this, yeah. by, by these people. See, what was happening in those times were isolated instances. You know, somebody in some corner of the country will get irritated and say, okay, now let's do something to this guy. And once you move from that, that was the end of the story. But now it's not like that. It's a big conspiracy. They have taken years to train people. They have had collected money from so many people so that they want to systematically eliminate those voices which are questioning them. The first thing that Narendra Dhabalkar did was he asked for a law. And that law he has been trying for a decade. And it became a law after he was killed. Until then, nothing much was happening because it was passed in one legislature, but the other one stopped it. And then it got stuck there. And Narendra Dabulkar was pursuing it. And it covered a lot of things like astrology, like these god men, like these other uh, things that they do to cheat people. So these people did not want that act to become law. So they finished him off. But what happened was it became law after. So can you send me a link to that, uh, the actual document of the law? Because I think yes. that should be part of the blog to educate people. Yes, it should be. Yes. Because India is a deeply superstitious country. We need a lot of things to be controlled. And then he was killed on the 21st of August 2013. And on the next day, we had a meeting in Bangalore, which was to condemn this act. And in that act, I, in that meeting, I put a demand that there should be an act like that for our state too. Mm -hmm. And it was at that time that the demand was taken up. And then attempts were on to draft a law for my state too. Mm -hmm. Narendra Dabulkar was working in Maharashtra. I am from a neighboring state called as Karnataka. Okay. So this later on was drafted in six months and then it was put for discussion and then of course a lot of other things happened. Mm -hmm. So currently there's no uh, federal law covering all of India. It was, it, they're just mm -hmm. different states. There's yes. The first one to pass such an act was Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. The second one to follow suit was Karnataka. But there is a sort of huge gap between the two. It was nearly four years after the Maharashtra Act was passed that the Karnataka one was passed. Karnataka one was passed in November 2017. And then afterwards, nothing much has been heard of it, though it has become law. We don't see much happening on that front. Uh -huh. So are you getting help from the United States and other places around the world in terms of pressuring the governments to protect the people and to protect people like yourself who are just trying to, you're, I think of you as a consumer fraud uh, activist. <laughs> I, think yes, I am, I am, I am. Right. In fact, we had drafted a Consumer Protection Act for Karnataka in 1986 or so which uh -huh. was made into the National Act. So uh -huh. I am a consumer activist too. Right. Because there's hardly any line which separates the two, the consumer activism from skepticism. Right. Because they're all part of each other. Uh -huh. So um, what else is important that you want to convey to people in the United States and around the world about what's happening with 
this particular uh, movement that you are involved with? Oh, oh, let me put it very clearly. We have been under attack since decades. We are always under threat from isolated groups, from isolated individuals, and from organizations. But today, after the particular government has taken power in 2014, there is support for these people from the top. That's why they get emboldened. That's uh. why they're attacking us more and more. And that's why we need the whole worldwide community. We are humanists. So for us humanists, all of us are one single community. So we say that when somebody is under threat, we should all stand by them. That's all right. I am on. Right, but I'm, 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 I'm not a humanist, even though I believe in humanism. I have, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm Jewish, but I stand by you for free speech, to protect human rights, to give people yeah. a choice to use their yeah. critical thinking to say, yeah. is this in my benefit or is this giving money to someone who's a multimillionaire who wants to uh, harm people? Uh, so I want to make the appeal broader than just to humanists around the world to come to your support. Christian right. should come to your support. Muslim should come to your support. Jew should yes. come to your support. Everyone. Yes. Uh, it's yes. for human rights, for basic yes. human rights. Yes, it's a part of basic human rights that we have the right to express what we think is right and question what we think is wrong. So exactly. This is what we have been doing since decades. And this is for the first time that such organized efforts are made with blatant support from the top. This is right. a tragedy. So, Otherwise, which media support are you getting in India to support you and to put pressure on the leadership of your country? Yes, maybe to a certain extent. But even the media is purchased by these people. Because some of the people who are talking about this non-science in our country are also media barons. They've got the media at the tip of their fingers. You know, media is like puppets who are being manipulated by these people. So we sometimes get supported, we sometimes do not. But what the media goes or what we call as the TRPs, that's the number of eyeballs that they can catch. And sometimes they can catch eyeballs very well uh, if they give uh, time for us. So probably that's why sometimes they give time to us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they want to appear as if they're fair. So to appear that you're fair, you have to have both sides. Right. So you bring that side and you bring our side also. And anyway, you manipulate things so that we are showing poor life. Anyway, anyway, it's a part of their game. We, we know how to play it and we do it also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's wow. courageous work. And uh, India is, you know, modernizing technology companies and, and uh, people have cell phones. They can do internet searches. And I see a lot of what your work is, is to encourage people how to question and yes. how to do research yes. and to understand if there's something is a, a claim, like they can yes. cure cancer, let's see yes. the proof. Let's yes. see the scientific evidence that backs yes. up your claim. And yes. if you don't have the proof, you can't make that claim. No, we are in a position where today, the word of a guru is taken as a proof. The word of a politician is taken as a proof. They do not ask for scientific evidence. Our problem in India is that we are a country with 21st century technology superimposed on a 16th century mindset. So that's a pretty dangerous combination. I that's agree. Why. Yes. I agree. But we are in the United States and we have a, bit, a lot of trouble ourselves. Yes. And there's a lot of yeah. corruption, as you know, yeah. a lot of, you know, criminal money yeah. uh, and cults yes. influencing politicians, yes. influencing politicians yes. and such. Uh, but people who know, how, who are awake and who can see 
uh, feel uh, an, an urgency. I know I feel it. I know you feel it to yes. help other people to, to, yes. to be concerned about our yes. fellow human being. Yes, right. That's what is our motive. Now, right. as you said, Hindus and Muslims and Christians and everybody. You know why these Hindu fundamentalist organizations are attacking us? Because if a Muslim says something, they can easily dismiss him, saying that he's a Muslim, he's saying that. If a Christian says something, they can dismiss them and say that they're talking something. But when somebody whom they call as a Hindu says it, it's very difficult for them to deny it. That's why they're after us. That's why they're after us in a very organized manner. And they have hundreds of people on the job. They have trained people how to kill using guns. They have trained people how to trail people. And so many things that they have done. So this is what is happening to us today. That's terrible. And in the Washington Post article, they were saying that members were being hypnotized to become assassins. Yes. Can you say what you know about that? There is a hypnotist. His name is Dr. Athawale. He is a psychiatrist. He is supposed to have started all this campaign, drugging these people, hypnotizing these people, and making them do things. There are a lot of complaints about him, how he has broken up marriages, how he has taken away husbands from wives, and things like that. And they do send very highly motivated people. So that's why this has been happening. Now, at present, that man is unavailable. He's, he's, he's locked himself somewhere. And it's his uh, gang who are doing this. He's from Goa, not very far from here. Only about 350 kilometers, about 200 miles from where wow. I stay. So I hope you're, you're protecting yourself. And I hope the police are protecting you. Yeah, there's always an armed gunman around my house. And I've been asked to take many precautions. We have CC closed circuit television coverage and so many things which I never did in my life. I yeah. just used to go around everywhere and do my work. Right. And now I just can't do it. I have to take too many precautions. I always used to wash my back, but now I have to wash my front, back, sides, everything. Mm. Well, I'm glad to reconnect with you, and I'm so sad to hear the threat uh, that's so um, immediate. Uh, but it's also a testimony to that you are having an effect, and people are yes. responding. Yes, very right, Steve. Very rightly said, because unless we have the effect, they'll not try to silence it. So far, they have been not doing much on the front. Because I thought, after all, let them keep on saying, we'll keep on doing all this. Now it looks like there has been an effect on them. There has been an effect on their following. That's why they're trying to eliminate it. Right. So I'm hoping that this interview, and I'll do a blog, and you'll give me more links, uh, names of people, because uh, English uh, was hard to hear with the internet. Uh, and then hopefully some media in the United States and around the world will pick up on this story and do more stories because that's right. the only way to punish them for trying yes. to silence uh, yes. a critic. Voices is, of reason. Is voices show, of reason. Yeah, and, and voices of reason and to show that if they kill one person, 10 more people will join the, the fight. Right. 20 people, 100 people, 1,000 people a million right. people in this internet age um, because I do think that when people are on the internet, this is what I've been finding in my work as I've been doing my help uh, of people in cults and mind control for 40 years. When they're on the internet, they're exposed to information and they get curious and they right. learn about other groups and it starts to educate them of, oh, there are patterns, controlling patterns that are these pyramid structured groups and people are made to feel obedient or punished if they're not obedient and that, that reason is dismissed, that you have right. to uh, surrender uh, to the guru and the guru is perfect, except there's so many stories about gurus coming out who have raping children, raping followers, abusing yeah. money, 
Yes. Uh, and as people hear about this group and that group and this group and that group, then they start to go, I wonder what's happening with my group. And, yeah, right. and then maybe they search for X members, they read blogs, they see that, that there is information. Right, right. That's the type of work that you have been doing in the US. Exactly, right. exactly. And as you know, I've written books. I just did an audio book of, of my original book, Combating Cult Mind Control, right. to make it easier for people to get access to the, to the information. So I wanna, I wanna stop at this point, but thank you for your bravery. Uh, please convey to all of the organizations that you have a supporter. <laughs> By the way, Steve, let me tell you one thing. Please. I'm not brave. I'm a coward. I cannot run away from a conscience. Uh. The toughest thing, you must have the maximum courage to do run away from your conscience, which I do not have. I, I love what, what you just said, actually, um, and it's really, I say this, I've been saying this for many, many years, I have to look at myself in the mirror at right. night when I go to sleep and I don't, and I want my conscience to be clear that I did good work, yes. that I did right. what I can do to help other people, and right. that I'm not uh, covering for criminals and and doing harmful things, I want to have a clear conscience. Right, right. And I want to be a good role model to my son. And, and, and in many ways, what we're doing is for the children and the children's children and the next generations. Because progress is not so right. easy. Yes, I know, I know. Great. Right. So thank you so much. And let's be in touch soon and you'll give sure. me more links and specific right. names and we'll put this this video out uh, next week right thank right. you so much narendra